Welcome back to Cheddar Movers. Telecom giant AT&T and Verizon have agreed to delay activating their 5G services around airports and runways once again. This comes after major U.S. airlines voiced their concern over the rollout of 5G technology, warning of an impending, quote, catastrophic aviation crisis. Joining us now is Hugh Odom, founder and president of Vertical Consultants, telecom expert and a former AT&T uh, attorney. Hugh, can you just break down for us why airlines are so worried about the implementation of 5G service near airports? I mean, coming out to the point of using the term catastrophic, and I don't know about you, for me, and I think many consumers, that word kind of triggers real fears about something like a plane crash as a result of something like this being rolled out. Are those valid? Well, I think the aviation industry has pointed out previously, and they still try to point this out, of a possible, and I want to emphasize the word possible, issue with 5G being rolled out around the airports and the altimeters, which determine the altitude of the plane, and especially they're in use when you're landing in foggy or bad weather conditions. The aviation industry has continued to said there's a possible issue that's out there between the 5G signal that's in the C band that AT&T and Verizon bought use of and the altimeters, and that could cause an issue down the road. You know, this isn't the first time that we've seen AT&T and Verizon um, essentially delay the rollout around airports. Do you think we ever see the service uh, deployed in the areas surrounding uh, surrounding airports? And is it truly necessary? What's the insight there? Well, it's, uh, yes, I think you're eventually going to see it. I think there's going to have to be some compromise between the two parties. And it's, it's somewhat frustrating that it has been reached because they've had two years to come up to this and then delays in December, delays early Mar early January, and now into the middle of January. I think for AT&T and Verizon, they're counting on it because they, they have to get these areas up and running because it provides them a situation if they don't, there's a differentiation between companies who can, more particularly T-Mobile and AT&T and Verizon service in this area. There's going to have to be a way to go to the aviation industry and say, look, identify exactly what the issue is. Tell us how to calibrate against the issue. If you tell us what the issue is in particular, we can position the towers and determine the strength of the signal on those towers to not to lower the chance or even eliminate the chance of interference. So to that point there, why isn't there clarity on what the exact issue is and then a potential solution as a result of understanding that exact issue? Because I sense the frustration there, and certainly we get it from AT&T. In a statement, an AT&T spokesperson said, quote, we are frustrated by the FAA's inability to do what nearly 40 countries have done, which is to safely deploy 5G technology without disrupting aviation service, and we urge it to do so in a timely manner. Really strong language there from AT&T kind of you know backing the frustration it seems to have here why isn't there transparency and a full understanding at what the exact issue is and how it can be resolved i think because the aviation industry is trying to hit a moving target with trying to figure out the issue the the aviation industry has a bigger problem with regards to aging fleet of their inventory of the planes etc and these altimeters are are in the planes are different manufacturers, different filters, different ages. So you can't set a standard or a benchmark to go to AT&T and Verizon and say, hit this, hit this mark against this particular altimeter type or standard if you have differing standards in your own planes. And again, as you mentioned, AT&T and Verizon are frustrated throwing their hands up and saying, look, provide us a, a way to calibrate, a way to determine how we need to address this, because right now both sides are being held to the detriment. The aviation industry has egg on its face because it has to go out there to its public uh, passengers and such and say there's a safety issue that we knew about and should have addressed earlier. The uh, wireless industry has an issue because it's going to have a situation by which it can't fully roll out services it's yeah. promised to millions of consumers. To that point, you know, timely manner is, is, is you know, two words that obviously at t used in that statement, really seemingly frustrated with all of a sudden now this coming to fruition, these safety concerns, when this has been in the pipeline for, for years now, why now is the FAA just seemingly starting to get on top of it, or have they been working on this prior? I think there's been some discussions over the last several months. But I think the big thing in the backroom issue is there could be a fight between the FAA and the FCC mm -hmm. of who controls the airwaves and who, who controls who, who gets to use them, who controls who gets to price them, who controls the method by which they are used. Yeah. And I think there's, there's been an issue, and this is kind of a little bit under, under the surface of that could be an issue. And I think 
the AVA, aviation industry possibly could have used this leverage at the very end to identify, or they've identified an issue in their planes with the aging yeah. fleet and get that addressed via money from <laughs> AT&T and Verizon. You know, another kind of point that I hope you can hone in on here, you know, AT&T mentions this has been rolled out in 40 other countries. They have done so in a timely manner. No issues apparently there. Is there anything different about the 5G implementation and rollout here in the U.S. than we see overseas? And if not, then why do we even have this issue? Well, there's two, there's two differences in, in Europe and more particularly in France and other countries in Europe. There, there is a frequency inside the C-band that's a little bit different from the AT&T and Verizon frequency inside that C-band, inside that spectrum. So there's a little bit of a difference there. The second thing is over in Europe, there's usually about a two mile buffer where either there's elimination of the service or more particularly there's a scale down of it. And there's some differing ways they do that. And that's the two biggest difference between the, the uh, European countries and what AT&T and Verizon is rolling out. Well, we hope this issue is one that gets resolved soon from a consumer perspective and certainly from an industry perspective. Thank you so much, Hugh Odom, founder and president of Vertical Consultants, telecom expert and former AT&T attorney. With that, I'm going to bring in Asia back because that's going to do it for us here on Cheddar Movers. Thanks so much for joining us, but don't go anywhere. An all new All Hands up next.